Hey everyone, it's Smite Pants Chess, I hope you're doing well. Today I want to look at a, another Nesmetnov game, and this time it's called the match for the title of Master. So this is where Nesmetnov had to play a Master to try and get a title. And it was a bit of extenuating circumstances for Nesmetnov because he was due to play another opponent beforehand, but that match got cancelled and he had to play another Master instead. He actually writes in his books, For three months I prepared for a match for the Master title against Lysitsyn. I studied his games and studied the end game, but a few days before the start of the competition, a telegram arrived stating that the match was to be played against an international master, Mikenas. Although I had already done much serious preparation, it was necessary to immediately reorganise things since I knew almost nothing about Mikenas's games. First of all, I made a thorough study on his article on the Alakine's defence. This assured me the success in the first game. And this is the game we're going to go through today. The match was held in Kazan in 1948. And in the first game, Nesmetnov was playing white, Mikenas was playing black. And we do indeed get an Alakhan's defence, so Nesmetnov plays e4, black plays knight to f6. Nesmetnov plays e5, attacks the knight on f6, with the knight jumping in to knight to g5. And Nesmetnov plays the main move c4 here. Now also, knight c3 can be played here, and usually black takes. And in the book, Nesmetnov says that d takes c3 has been played by players such as Korchnoi. And play continues g6, knight to f3, with black developing, white developing the bishop to f4. Black striking out this e5 pawn, but white develops quickly. And after casting queenside, bishop g4, takes, takes, and bishop e2. The idea is that white's got a solid base for the king, and they've got great uh, development for their pieces. Now, a more modern approach, actually, after this knight takes c3. Um, b takes c3 has become quite a good move for white now as well. If black goes d6, the idea is to just make a nice pawn chain in the centre with f4, and if g6, you can play d4. Um, and I guess the idea for white here is to play moves like bishop d3, you can even play rook b1 and really attack this pawn as well. But typically the main moves are just bishop g7, knight to f3, and castles, bishop d3, and black usually hits out his pawn chain with c5. White can castle, of course, and after a few takes, knight c6, bishop e3, bishop g4. Uh, White should now play bishop e4 and has a very solid base in the centre with a nice pawn chain. That's the game though. So Nesmetnov played c4 here, the main move. Attacking the knight, which jumps to b6. And he now chases this knight, he plays c5. Attacking it once again. Knight d5 is the only move. And he attacks it again with bishop c4. And finally, black protects the knight with e6. And this bishop is also unleashed to attack c5. But this is all opening theory, so knight c3 is played. And I think the idea now is bishop takes c5, white goes for queen g4. If black castles, then white can play d4. And now after f5, now he should play queen to g3. And if bishop takes d4, knight takes d5, pawn takes d5. The bishop takes with check, king h8, and white can just play knight to f3, attacking the bishop. And once the bishop drops back, White has a nice game with knight g5, attacking f7, preparing to fork the king and the queen. So already black can really take the c5 pawn. So in the game, black took on c3. Knight takes the knight. Pawn recaptures. And again, black does have to be a bit careful about taking this pawn straight away. Again, if bishop takes c5, white should play queen g4, attacking the g7 pawn. If black castles into this, this is suicide because bishop h6 and g6. White can just win the rook on f8. So we should go back. After queen g4, black should protect this pawn with king f8. But then again, white can just play bishop f4. And the idea now is just to castle queen side for white. White's a pawn down, but has great development, as you see. Two bishops and a queen, and would get castled really quickly. So a great initiative for white. A good initiative for the pawn. But after d takes c3, Mikenas played queen h4, attacking the bishop on c4. Nesmetnov played queen to e2 to protect their bishop. And finally black takes on c5. So black suddenly a pawn up. And development is actually quite equal. However, there are a few tricks in this position, which I guess Nesmetnov must have studied. He played knight to h3. Now the idea behind this move is that white wants to play bishop g5. And if he can get that move in, uh, the queen on h4 is trapped for black. So to stop Bishop g5, there are a few moves. Queen e7 was suggested in the book. But then I think white plays bishop g5. 
And if f6, they take the pawn. And if takes, white can actually play bishop takes f6. And if queen takes f6, white has queen h5 with check. After queen f7 to block it, white can win back the bishop and the pawn basically with queen takes c5, and white has a great game. If black decides to stop bishop g5 with h6, Nesmenov actually believes white is much better after bishop f4, let's say. Preparing ideas like bishop to g3, or just g3 at some point. Now white does have a massive lead in development, we'll probably castle queenside and start harassing the bishop and the queen, which are in very awkward positions. So after this knight h3 move, Nesmitnov wrote that queen e7 was probably the best move because what black played next actually led to a tragedy. They played f6. So white took this pawn. And if the g if the g pawn takes this off, then white can play knight to f4. And it's got a very nasty threat of g3 coming for white. For instance, if knight c6 here and g3, uh, the queen's really struggling for moves. Literally, um, g5 and h6 are the only squares to go to. And if queen h6, then white can play moves like knight to e6, unleash the bishop. So for this reason, queen takes f6 was played. But um, this looks like it leads to a fatal error because now Nesmetnov just plays queen h5 check, attacking the bishop and the king at the same time. Queen g6 was played by Mikenas. Queen takes c5. And maybe black thought that queen takes g2 here just um, wins back the piece, which it does. But now white gets a really good initiative. So the queen's attacking the knight and the rook. However, white has a move they can play with rook g1. So attacking the queen and this pawn at the same time. Of course, black now hoovers up this knight on h3 with queen takes h3. But white can now play rook takes g7, threatening mates with queen to e7. So Nesmetnov is in a very strong position. And black's got some defending to do. And actually it's quite undefendable. If d6... White can just play queen g5. And if knight c6 to stop queen e7, white can just play bishop b5, pinning this knight and still threatening queen e7, and basically black is lost in this variation. So back to the game after rook takes g7. Black tried to defend with knight c6, um, using this knight to stop queen e7, of course. But Nesmetov came up with a very crafty move, just bishop back to e2. The point is that now he's going to play bishop h5 check, followed by bishop g5 check, and there's very little black can do. There's a great variation here that I looked at with stockfish. If h5 for black here to stop bishop h5, then just queen to g5. And if queen f5 trying to trade queens, rook g8 check, takes takes, king e7, and white can finish with bishop g5 with check. King d6 is forced. And white now has all the aces with castle and queenside with check. If king c5, there's bishop e3 check. Black's king's going walkabout. And after knight d4, this rook takes d4. King c6 and rook c4 check. The king to d6 and there's quite a nice variation with bishop c5, king c6 and bishop e7. Check from the rook. And after a few more moves, king to b6, the queen finally joins the action, preparing queen takes c7. If a6 to try and hide, there's queen e3, c5, and bishop takes c5, king c6, and the bishop has another discovered check with the rook. If the king moves, finally rook b4, king c6, queen b6, king d5, and finally white mates in a very complex but forced line where white mates the king in roughly 15 or so moves. So no doubt, I don't think either player saw that, but... Well, that's what happens if black decides to play h5. Instead, Mikenas played e5. Nesmetnov played bishop g4, attacking the queen. If the queen went to d3, again white wins with bishop h5 check, king d8, and then bishop g5. Knight e7, queen takes e7 is checkmate. So queen h4 was played to stop um, bishop g5 ideas. But then Nesmetnov finally put the nail in the coffin with queen to d5, and black actually resigned the game here. The point is, queen f7 is coming, and also bishop g5, with the rook protecting it anyway. If black tries to defend, let's say queen f6, we've got bishop h5 with check, king d8, and then just rook g8 with check. Rook takes rook, queen takes, king e7, and bishop g5 at the end of it. White will win the queen. And here if rook f8 to try and defend, then white can just play bishop takes d7. And of course if bishop takes d7, there's queen takes with checkmate. And if king d8... 
there's bishop takes c6 discover check with the queen bishop d7 and queen takes d7 is checkmate so this was the final position and next Mendoff won this game in 17 moves a great start to his campaign to become a master especially against an opponent he hadn't prepared for so no doubt Nesmentov's preparation came very handy in this opening against black, the black pieces. And it's a short but very sweet game. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed my analysis and commentary. If you did, please drop a like, comment or subscribe and support my channel. It really helps. And hopefully I'll see you in the next videos to come. Thank you very much.